I want to start by saying this. I want to talk a little bit about God's will and, uh, and we're going to go into faith. God's will is not determined by the outcome of his disciples. Sometimes the disciples fails or they don't fulfill God's will. I need to say this because doctrines have been built because somebody prayed for somebody and they didn't receive healing so that there are people that that write doctrines that say that it's not God's will to heal today it has already ended so God's will is not determined by his disciple if he prays for somebody and if they don't get healed God's will is not determined by that because sometimes the disciples fails and doesn't fulfill God's will I will give you an example in the Bible Jesus was on top of the mountain with his other disciples and on the bottom of the mountain there was those disciples where they couldn't the bible says they couldn't drive out a demon possessed boy they couldn't bring healing into the boy now if it was in the 21st century we would have wrote a doctrine about it saying you know it's not god's will to heal that boy you know it's just his condition but jesus was physically there so when they brought the boy to jesus it got answered and God's will was manifested on the earth the boy was healed and he was given back to his father so Jesus is the same yesterday today and forever now Jesus rebuked his disciples many many times because of their lack of faith Matthew chapter 17 verse 9 to 20 says then disciples came to Jesus privately and said why couldn't we cast it out and he said to them because of your little faith Jesus tested his disciples before he broke the bread to the thousands he says you give him something to eat he said that to test them and they said how are we gonna with do you know how much money it's gonna take to feed all these people but he already knew what he was gonna do he tested their faith Matthew 8 26 and he said to them why are you afraid you men of little faith Matthew 4 21 it says Peter oh you of little faith why did you doubt Mark 16 14 says later he appeared to the 11 as they sat at the table and he rebuked them for their unbelief and their hardness of heart because they did not believe Jesus spent three and a half years with his disciples He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. See, the thing is, he worked with his disciples on their faith because he knew that in order to bring the kingdom of God to the earth, it's going to require faith. And he rebuked them many, many times. Now, a rebuke corrects us from a certain pattern of thinking. For example, when you go pray for somebody and they don't get healed, there's this pattern of thinking that can creep into your, your mind, your thoughts. Well, maybe it's not God's will. Maybe God is trying to teach him a lesson. You see, Jesus didn't allow that kind of thinking to affect his disciples. So he physically said, he rebuked them. He rebuked them. He rebuked them. He rebuked them. He set them straight because knowing that he's going to leave, he's going to go to heaven, and they're going to have to carry out God's will on this earth God's will is not determined if that disciples uh, passes or fails God's will is set in heaven um, now what is God's will the Bible we, we are given the old and the new testament a will or a testament is a legal document for example if if I have kids and I'm going to die and I have an inheritance to leave my child, I'm going to write out a will to, so that when I die, when I pass away, I'm going to give it to them and they're going to know what they will inherit. In the Old Testament, in the New Testament, God left us his will. You see, many Christians, many believers, they're waiting for a special revelation of God's will. They think they, they need a special revelation, not knowing that God has already left them his will on this earth. You see, Jesus is the perfect theology. When Jesus walked on earth, he didn't give one person a sickness or pain. 
only people that Jesus inflicted pain was when he made a whip and he went into the temple and he drove out, drove out those in the temple. You see, our bodies are representative of our temples are of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is actually willing to drive out things out of our life that don't belong. So the only pain, the only sickness that, that I'm going to rephrase that, the only pain that he, Jesus inflicted was driving out, cleaning out the temple. God is willing and ready to clean out torment out of your life, to clean out darkness out of your life, to clean out things in your life that don't belong. Now, Jesus never gave somebody sickness when he walked on earth you see Jesus took sickness and pain upon himself now in the legal court system in the legal court system if I committed a crime and they carry out punishment on me it's just and it's true and it's fine now if they carry out justice on my wife because I committed a crime is that legal or illegal now if Jesus carried took sickness upon himself is it just that we carry it is it legal that we carry it why would he give it to us if he took it upon himself John 1 3 a says for this purpose the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil Acts 10 38 says Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him God is our solution he is not our problem the Bible says the thief comes to steal kill and destroy sickness steals our health pain steals our strength our money our time our joy it puts a strain on relationships it stops a person from working from providing John 3 1 2 says dear friends I pray that you may enjoy health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along well Exodus 15 26 says for I am the Lord who heals you Isaiah 53 5 and I am reading God's will to you right now this is all God's will but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed psalms 103 2 to 3 says bless the lord O my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases our god is called a redeemer a redeemer is a person who redeems meaning someone who repays recovers saves and exchanges something for something else you know if it was only our souls and our spirits that are needing redemption then Jesus would never receive stripes on his back because because when he receives when he received stripes on his back it was for our bodies to be healed Corinthians says the body is not for sexual immorality the body is for the Lord and the Lord for the body why would God put sickness in the body where the body is belonging for him his temple is holy his temple is clean He says, dear friends, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. Job says, I know my Redeemer lives. Does your body need redemption? Jesus said, it's not the healthy that need, needs a doctor, it's the sick. So if you're afflicted, if you're in pain, Jesus is here for you. James 5, 14 to 15 says is anyone sick among you let him call upon the elders of the church and let him pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord and the pray the prayer of faith will save the sick you see I'll explain this don't worry you see God's will represents this God's will is full of life of of healing of redemption of salvation God's will is ready you see there's no problem on God's side God sent his son Jesus Christ to come and die in our place for our salvation took the stripes on his back for our healing God has done everything he could for us to experience for us for the promises for his will God's will is ready but the the problem is even though 
it's God's will for you to be saved, for you to be healed, for you to be delivered. I'll, for you to be delivered. I want to ask you, is it God's will for everyone to be saved? Will everyone be saved? Why? They don't accept. Now, the top represents God's will. The bottom represents your need for healing. Your need for salvation. Your need for breakthrough. Your need for deliverance. And in between, that blue thing represents faith. God's will, as much as he wants to, as much as he desires to, he works through faith. I'm going to prove this to you. If you open up to Mark chapter 6, verse 5 to 6, it says, And he could do no mighty work there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Jesus, think about this. Jesus, the Son of God, says he could do no mighty work. The Bible doesn't say he, would, he wouldn't do. Now, the word could and the word would is two different things. The word could, meaning he was restrained. He wanted to, but he couldn't. The word would, meaning it's on his part. If he didn't want to, that's Jesus. But the Bible says he, could, he couldn't do any mighty work there except lay his hands on a few sick people and he healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. So even though God's will and his desire for you to be healed, for you to be saved, for you to be de delivered, even though he, as much as he wants it for you to it happen in your life, it is funneled through faith it's funneled through faith faith is the currency of heaven God answers faith not need faith is not a feeling faith does not rely on sense evidence faith is believing what God will do what he has promised to do faith acts faith receives faith is based on God's word that's why I'm reading to you God's will because if you don't understand God's will you're gonna have a problem with faith because you're not gonna be sure what God's will is you see when Jesus walked on earth there was two things he marveled he was amazed he was astonished at is is what is when people had great faith and when people had a lack of it two things now what angered Jesus was the Pharisees but what amazed and, and, and marveled that he's like wow is when people had a lot of faith and when people had no faith you see before Jesus healed anyone he looked for faith he identified faith in people Romans 10 17 says so then faith comes comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God you see church this is why we share testimonies to encourage your faith this part in the middle represents this balloon see your faith at times when you hear the word of God it grows when you hear testimonies that's why we share these testimonies right here so your faith will be enlarged because faith is affected by what you hear and what you believe we share testimonies to encourage your faith, but we share the Word of God to build your faith. I want you to open up, and I want us to look at a story of what happened in Mark chapter 5, verse 21. Now, when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogues, Jairus by name when he saw him he fell at his feet and he begged him earnestly saying my little daughter lies at a point of death come and lay your hands on her that she might be healed and she will be well J Jairus probably heard about Jesus what Jesus has done to the blind man what Jesus has done to that sick person Jairus heard that Jesus is capable of healing so Jairus started with a little bit of faith he came to Jesus now let's continue to see what happened so Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed him and thronged him 
Now a certain woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians and she had spent all she had and she was not better but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment for she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body she was healed from the affliction and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him turned around to the crowd and said who touched my clothes and his disciples said to him you see the multitude thronging you and you say who touched me and he looked around to see who had done this thing but the woman fearing and trembling knowing what had happened to her came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth and he said to her daughter your faith has made you well go in peace and be healed of your affliction hold on we're we didn't get to the story where I want to get, but we're going to take a little sidetrack. Think about this. This woman touched Jesus. How dare she? How dare she come to Jesus and reach into his pockets without asking what's his will for her? How dare she do that? She literally touched his clothes and power left her, left Jesus, went into her and healed her. How dare she do that? Does she know what God's will is? Maybe it's, maybe, maybe she, it's her condition to spend the rest of her life to be sick. How dare she steal from Jesus, go into his pocket and, and take his healing? So, so uncool. But you see, God's will is ready and it's available and Jesus noticed that power left him went into the woman and it brought healing and Jesus says go she said daughter your faith has made you well go in peace and be healed of your affliction of your affliction while he was speaking some of the rule some some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house and said your daughter is dead why trouble the teacher any further now Jairus is walking with Jesus this woman gets healed Jairus faith probably went up even more he just saw physically a woman get healed but then news came to his house your daughter is dead why trouble the teacher what do you think happened to his faith he just heard his daughter is dead. Now listen to me carefully. I did some research. If you want to know what was happening at his house, because the Bible says somebody from his house came and said, your daughter is dead. Do you, not, do you want to know what was happening at the house? They already were going to have a funeral. They hired flute players they hired a crowd that is going to mourn and is going to wail it's going to cry they already hired people they already had an agenda at the house even before jesus came now a lot of people go to doctors hospitals for help in 2019 19 about the average hosp hospitals combined in the United States made about 1.1 trillion dollars the top 10 hospitals reported in 2017 just top 10 a revenue of three billion dollars the top 50 hospitals earn more than 123 billion dollars in revenue one of the, the executive pays in, in a top hospital was $21.6 million. Now, I don't know what kind of agenda was coming from the house because they already hired somebody to cry. They already hired somebody. So money was being paid. But the Bible says, if we keep reading, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, overhearing what they said Jesus heard what was spoken your daughter is dead you know when you go to the hospital and they give you a condition you got cancer it's like cold blood into your into your veins when you hear that report when somebody says 
this sickness is impossible. You're going to die. When you hear that, what do you do? What do you do? Because the hospitals, they make money off of your sickness. Some of them have an agenda. I'm not saying hospitals are bad. I am for doctors and hospitals. They have their place. But millions and billions of dollars are being made from people getting sick. Jesus, overhearing what was said, says, He said to the ruler, Do not be afraid. Only believe. Will you allow Jesus to overhear your condition? Yeah, the Bible says it's impossible with men. But the, what my Bible says, what's impossible met with men is possible with God. If you can bring a little faith to our God, I'll tell you what he can do. And he said to the ruler, do not be afraid, only believe. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter. James and John the brother of James then they came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly and he came in and he said to them why make this commotion and weep the child is not dead but sleeping they ridiculed him you know some of them were hired they were mourning and in some translation it says they laughed at him I mean think about it what kind of emotions is that? You're hired to cry and then you're laughing at Jesus. When he came inside, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. And when he had put them all outside, you know, you need to put all those people outside that says it's not possible. You're going to die. You know, all the ones that have a different agenda, you need to put them out. Put them out. And he took the child by the hand and said to her, Telekamun, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked for she was 12 years of age. And they were overcome with great amazement. Now, Jesus paid a high price. You know, hospitals, $1.1 trillion for your sickness. And a lot of times, people get worse sometimes, get worse than better. But Jesus paid a high price for your healing. He paid a high price. It was the blood of Jesus, the sacrifice of the wounds that happened on his bodies for your and my healing. And last thing I want to I want to end it with is a testimony. If, if we can have the worship team come up, I want you to fix your eyes on the screen. This is a testimony of what happened at, at one of our race to deliver conferences. This is Julia. Many of you guys know her. She came to one of our race to deliver conferences. Now, if you don't know her. She got into a car accident and became paralyzed from the neck down all the way to her feet. They had to put a catheter within her to feed her. Julia is an incredible woman of faith. Incredible woman of faith. Her parents wanted to buy her a wheelchair. And Julia says, I don't want you to buy me a wheelchair. And she said, if you buy me a wheelchair... That means I'm going to be in this condition for the rest of my life. She says, that is not my portion. And her dad says, how are we going to bring you to the conference? So they agreed to get a wheelchair on rent. They rented a wheelchair and they brought her to this conference of Race to Deliver. But what I'm emphasizing is the faith that was inside of her heart that says even when before she came to race to delivery in her heart she says I do not want you to buy me this wheelchair that is not my portion my portion is what the Lord has for me the Bible says whose report will you believe will you believe the report of the doctor or you believe the report of the Lord and Julia came to our race to deliver conference received prayer 
she started walking God healed her the next picture you see the next picture is Julia got water baptized right here at our church the next picture we see is Julia graduating from our internship program but how her healing happened is her faith allowed God allowed the will of God to touch her life God is willing to heal you he has done everything on his part but he goes through he funnel it's it's all gets funneled through faith will you enlarge your faith will you stretch that part stretch that part that that God can touch that part that your bones your muscles your nerves whatever whatever it needs to happen in your life will you allow God to touch that part so healing can happen in your life